Hey guys, welcome back to Wait and See with Celeste Lynch. I'm Celeste Lynch, and let's get started. So this episode is called Embracing the New because I have a lot of new announcements. I've been working a lot on some different stuff for the podcast, and I'm so excited to be telling you about it. So the first thing is you probably already noticed is we have a new logo. So that's right. I learned some more things about graphic design and figured out a logo that I think is way more representative than the old one. And I really want to stick to this one long term all the way because I think it's way better than the old one and represents the brand a lot better. I mean, it's literally a girl and a microphone and that is exactly what this podcast is. The next thing is a YouTube channel. So yes, the podcast has a YouTube channel. It is wait and see. You should definitely go subscribe. The link is in the description. Um, I'm putting out all of the episodes there. So they're still going to be on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and all the other platforms that the podcast is on, but it's also going to go up on YouTube. And I'm hoping in the future to possibly come out with some video podcasts or some exclusive content for y'all there. So definitely, definitely stay tuned with that. If you want to find out about all of these things before I talk about it on the podcast, you should definitely follow our Instagram at wait and see podcast because I announced all these things on there a while ago. So definitely keep up with that. Plus, you can find tons of helpful links and stuff there. I'm really hoping to make that a more, I guess, aesthetically pleasing place too. So if you actually look at the Instagram, I scrapped a lot of the old pictures and putting new, more detailed, better images that I learned how to make. So talk about how I made the logo and everything. I took some brown classes over the summer and for the Brown Summer High School program and we learned how to use this thing called Canva and that's where I was able to make all of the new Instagram announcement pictures plus this logo. So if you need to make something for school or maybe you want to start your own thing, definitely go there because you do not want to use some like grody logo maker that makes it all pixely because, you know, it's not cute. So those are the main announcements. The next thing I want to announce is that it is September. I'm with September. There's a lot of things that come with September and talk about that later, but I actually want to talk about that September is Child Cancer Awareness Month, which is a, I feel like the theme for this episode is so fitting for the time that I'm recording it. Today is September 2nd, 2020, and September, I feel like, is the beginning of something new. You know, it is the end of an era, the end of summer. I think we all love summer. This summer was weird. That's not what this is about. September is the start of a new season, fall, the start of the school year for a lot of people, at least here in the States. And I don't know, I've always felt like September is the time where I'm gearing up. I'm gearing up to do tons of new things, and just start fresh for the new school year and the fact that I'm, you know, in a new age. I had a birthday at the end of August, so I feel like I finish off August in, like, party mode because I also have my mom's birthday. And then September is, like, okay, grind time. Like, it's time to go. So I want to talk about just, like, embracing all the new things that are coming towards me in life and maybe in your life, too. So one of the biggest things I've done this week is I signed up for driver's ed. Whoop whoop. Yay, you learned how to drive, which is very, very, very exciting. Uh, I'm going to take it online, which is a little weird, but, you know, we'll see. So I have that, like, it's about two hours long, two or three hours long, three times a week. But you know what? It's going to be so definitely worth it. And I'm hoping to start a new job and I'm starting a new school year. So a lot of new things are coming my way. Um, I feel like this year has been full of new things for a lot of people, um, you know, just new routines with having to stay home, having to work from home, just different procedures when it comes to daily life, like going out to the grocery store or picking up food. It really is, I feel like, has just been a new beginning. And I know for me, I was very hesitant to sort of embrace or to acknowledge the fact that things are different now. Um, but there's definitely things that I think I'm going to enjoy with a sort of new normal and 
change can definitely be a good thing. I know I've experienced a lot of change, not just like with the whole quarantine, but especially this year, I had a lot of change with certain friendships and school and yeah, and it was difficult. Um, I like cried some, don't tell anyone that, <laughs> but for real, um, I think just being, when things like that end, it's important to acknowledge that it's like a new chapter and to embrace the new things that are coming so for me i'm actually going to be doing hybrid school which means part online part in person and i recently found out that the group i'm going to be in for in person i'm not going to have a lot of friends in that group and at first i was kind of sad about it because it's going to be a big change like i'm so used to being with my friends every day in school and it's not going to be like that anymore but now like thinking about it more embracing the new with that can be like i'm gonna meet new people or maybe i won't make a lot of friends but it'll be a time where i can really sort of like crack down on my work and get it done fast and eff efficiently because i want to work on the podcast do driver's ed get a job maybe ma learn to play the guitar there's a lot of things that are going to be on my plate and this might be the best time to do that especially because with online school gonna have a lot more flexibility hopefully and just I mean we do have like scheduled classes and stuff but the classes end kind of early during the online days so it's definitely something I'm kind of looking forward to which is nice um I think at this age, things are constantly changing, and I'm going to have to be embracing those changes. Um, going to be a lot busier, especially if I do get a job, which is crazy to think about because, like, it's such a, I feel like it's such a big deal. Like, I'm kind of nervous, but, you know, embracing the new. I'm going to hopefully be getting, well, if I do work, I'm going to get paid, and I'm going to have a lot of time commitment and responsibility but it's going to come with new privileges and being able to drive is going to be a new privilege that i'm going to be able to take advantage of and yeah just embracing all the new things because people i think some people take change very personally and it can be really hard to deal with it i know for me when things have changed in my life with moving and stuff it can be really hard um when i moved to rhode island I was definitely a little nervous because I was in a whole new state with a lot of differences from where I had lived before, and I was coming into a school district where everyone had known each other basically since, like, kindergarten. So in my district, there is only one middle school, so everyone in that district go to the same middle school, and a lot of the kids have known each other forever, you know, going to church together, playing on the same sports teams, because people don't move a lot here. And I could have taken that with, like, the negative of being, like, oh, I'm the new kid. Like, no one's going to want to be friends with me. But, like, looking on the positive side, um, I could, like, take advantage of being, like, whoever I wanted to be because no one knew me. Like, I could – no one had to know anything about me. I could just make, like, a whole new – not, like, a whole new identity for myself, but be known for different reasons. And now looking back, I really wish that I had thought about that more because – um, I do not look the person who was in middle school, and now everyone knows me as that, or not everyone, but, like, I think about how people know me as my middle school self. Like, some people, that is their only impression of me. Even, like, freshman year me was so different from me now, which sounds really cliche because I was a freshman, like, not that long ago in 2018, and it's 2020, so, like, but... I feel like there has been a big difference, especially in quarantine, and I think that's true for a lot of people um, who I've talked to. They're like, dang, like, I'm a completely different person, and I'm so interested to see if that's true, because, like, what if people I know, like, a certain way come back to school, and they're completely different? So a third of my school is doing online school, and the rest of the school is doing hybrid, and that the rest of the school that's doing hybrid is being split in half. So I'm, you know, I'm a little, I don't want to say nervous, but I'm just really 
intrigued as to how everything is going to work like socially what if i end up being with, like completely different people which isn't bad at all i'm super interested in making new friends i used to close myself off a lot to people and i was always waiting for people to sort of like make the first move like i wouldn't really introduce myself to people or make an effort to make plans or conversation and now i'm starting to realize like through this time of isolation that if people like if you want to talk to people they can't read your mind like you have to actually actively engage and be the person who reaches out and you know what <laughs> it's been working um i think i was i was kind of waiting for people to text me and stuff and then i was like no one's texting me like what's going on and then you just realize like sometimes if you don't make that effort people won't like respond it's like you have to be a friend to make friends and i've never been someone who has a lot of friends and i'm not really interested in having a lot of friends but i think really nurturing like the friendships i do have is something that's going to be really important to me and that's one of those like embracing the new things like i want to embrace that new side of myself i don't have to be antisocial or i don't have to be closed off all the time like there's no reason to and that was something i definitely did a lot and still do um i used to be very awkward and i still am pretty awkward but i i was talking to someone this morning and i was telling them like i think i've become less awkward because i'm 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 not trying to fight it as much i think when you are naturally a bit awkward and you keep trying to suppress it it like grows and grows and so now i'm like okay this this is how i am and just being like more secure with myself and spending a lot of time with myself has made me sort of embrace the more outgoing side more which is kind of counterintuitive but i'm definitely interested to see how it changes in school because i am i tend to be pretty quiet in school for the most part unless i'm with people i'm close to um or just with a group of people i'm comfortable with but when i'm not i'm very sort of like closed off i i don't really wear headphones in school that much but i kind of just focus on my own thing and maybe talk to like one person kind of especially in high school now that we're allowed to have our phones because we're allowed to have our phones in high school during sort of free times um it depends on the teacher but i think that has definitely hindered my like i guess not ability but my desire to reach out to people so that's one of those things i want to try this year is to sort of like stay off my phone when i can't talk to, or when i don't know people or to get out of like social situations because it's a lot of those like random interactions that build up that can become like you know a friendship or a close acquaintance i like using that term because i feel like not everyone you know is your friend or not everyone you like get along with is necessarily your friend that's something i learned this year with like different conversations with different people is like i think in elementary school i teach you like oh everyone is your friend and then in middle school it's like okay uh it's like kind of a transition and then once you're in high school it's kind of like okay like you don't know everyone and some people you just have like a couple classes with and y'all are cool but are you really friends like not really and so now my definition of friend is so much more like narrow so i like to call people close acquaintances that sounds kind of mean like to their face i probably wouldn't say that i'm like yeah like they're a close acquaintance and it's like yeah you know like we're cool we know each other and i want to like embrace those relationships a lot more like maybe not carry them over to the friend level, but just to be, like, more grateful and, like, mindful of those people who I'm, like, you know, like, we just interact, like, we're cool, um, and, yeah, like, you just never know, like, when you're gonna need help from someone or they're gonna need help from you, and that's definitely a new thing that I want to embrace this year. It's gonna be weird with, you know, just all of the COVID restrictions and having to wear masks and all, but hopefully i just everything goes well and yeah we'll see that's sort of like my attitude with the whole thing is like embracing the new embracing all of these new things and instead of being scared and like frightened about how everything is going to be different just sort of going with the flow rolling with the punches and seeing like what happens because this could actually be really beneficial for me um you know if 
I have a smaller group, I can maybe get to know more people, and maybe if I have a smaller group, I maybe maybe I won't like anyone, and I'll just be more concentrated on the people who I actually do enjoy spending time with, and my schoolwork, driving, job, there's going to be a lot of new things this year, and I'm very much looking forward to learning more and making that big step. I was talking with one of my friends just recently, we were texting, and the jump, they were talking about the jump between 15 and 16, because she turned 16, like, a lot earlier this year, and so now she's driving, she has a job, and I was like, wow, I feel like we're in different places, um, like, you're so far ahead of me right now, she's like, yeah, like, the difference between 15 and 16 can be so big, because, like, 15, you can't drive, you really can't, you know, get a job, <laughs> and 16, you can, and so those are two pretty, like, fundamental adult things I feel like and I don't mean like oh I'm an adult now because I'm definitely not but definitely closer to it which is only slightly frightening just because I feel like I have two years to like figure out how to sustain my own life and then I'm off and I feel like I'm behind this is a this is one of the first times in my life where I feel like, dang, like, I really don't know anything, and, like, I need to learn, I barely know how to cook, like, I don't know how to pay taxes, or, like, make a bank account, or do any of that stuff, which is really, really, like, kind of scary, because I'm gonna have to do that soon, and, like, when do they teach you that, because they don't teach you that in high school, and they don't teach you that in college, I don't think, so, we'll see, but, I'm, again, embracing the new. Like, instead of being nervous, because I'm a very anxious person, I would say I'm always wondering, like, what if, or, oh, like, how will this be? And I want to embrace a new side, which is, like, just going with the flow, rolling with the punches, and not being nervous, because with some prior experiences in my life, the anticipation was always worse than what would actually happen. And it's like when you get nervous, when you feel that anxiety, when you anticipate, you suffer twice as much. And it's like, okay, going after going with a more positive attitude and not being so closed minded or attached to the old way of doing things. Like, I used to be so hateful towards masks. I did not want to wear a mask. I hated wearing a mask. I, like, didn't even want to go outside or anything because I didn't want to wear a mask. And now it's, like, whatever. Like, I just wear the mask, and it's really not that uncomfortable, you know? I I still don't really like it that much. I would rather not have to wear one, but at this point, it's, like, just rolling with it. I mean, like, okay, this is something I have to do, and I'm going to do it, and it's really not that bad. And honestly, like, they're starting to get kind of fun just because my mom is buying a lot of them. <laughs> And so they all have different designs and stuff and i have these ones that are that we got at church because um another church had a lot of them donated to give to their parish parishioners and they actually handed some over to my church and so i got some from my church and they're this like white cottony material and it feels like a blanket on your face like i was wearing it in the car even when i didn't have to so yeah, I'm just like embracing the new way of doing things. One thing I really like about the new way of doing things is having to be six feet apart from strangers because like in the grocery store line or just like in general, I don't really like being around people I don't know, like close by. So that has been something I like because I don't really want to like be near y'all. <laughs> yeah. That's part of, like, my sort of antisocial closed-off side, but I feel like with strangers, like, strangers at the grocery store, it's different than, like, kids from my school. Another thing about embracing the new is just, like, having to do a lot of things from home, and so I actually have some projects for, like, sort of outreach projects I would have never really thought of um, if it wasn't for all of these restrictions, especially with kids doing online school, I really want to work on, you know, maybe doing some tutoring for kids in need that I know, um, and that's something I would have never really thought of or seriously considered doing until now, and that is something I'm very grateful for because I feel like that could definitely um, be a good thing for me and for them, so 
yeah, it's just a lot of new things are coming. And I feel like I'm on the precipice of like a new point. I don't know if that's like dramatic or not, but I feel like I'm on the precipice. Like I'm just waiting for the school year to start. I'm waiting for my driver's ed to start. I'm waiting for my driver's ed to end so that I can, you know, maybe apply for the job because I don't have to do driver's ed for three hours every night. Um, and yeah, it's like, I feel like I'm on the cusp. Like I want to jump. I'm ready. I um, haven't been to school in six months and I've never been one to hate school, but I definitely was never one to like hardcore love school and I just want to go back I want to have some more structure more things to do I still have summer work so what am I talking about like I need to work on that before I get <laughs> into going to school but I just I want to go back my first day is virtual um which is going to be de definitely strange because our classes are like half an hour each one is half an hour during the first day of school and we go to every single one um it's on zoom i don't i don't know i'm okay you know what i'm not gonna say i'm nervous um because we're embracing the new i'm gonna say that i am very curious and excited because i get to do this all from home i don't have to look cute you know and it gives me time to mentally prepare more like it's sort of like a soft opening to school like okay i'm seeing teachers like seeing school things but i'm not in school yet and it's for a short period of time the only thing is i don't know if i'm going to have the motivation to wake up at like six in the morning for school when i'm doing it at home because during like online school last year i would sleep through my zooms <laughs> you i would sleep through my zooms and i am not trying to sleep through my zooms during the first day of school like that you know that is not what we want to do that would be that would leave such a poor impression like imagine showing up to school late on the first day of school but not late by a few minutes late by a few hours i do not want to do that i do not want to be late by a few hours to school and i just want to leave good impressions for my teachers for so that when they see me they're i don't know i don't know who, I would love to know how teachers feel on the first day of school or like how they feel about their students just based on like first impressions right off. My school is, I mean, it's not super small, but it's pretty small. So it's like, I feel like you see all of the teachers, even if you don't have them, like you just see them and they probably recognize your face for the most part and probably like already make snap judgments about you. But I would really love to know because I remember there was a kid in a couple of my classes who just like right off the bat, the teachers hated him. And I have no idea why. These were like honors classes and these teachers did not like this kid. I mean, I guess they had like kind of good reason because he didn't really do a lot of work, but literally like <laughs> just right off the bat. And I kind of feel bad, but I mean, you gotta leave a good impression. Plus, especially this year, I wanna leave a really good impression because these teachers are gonna be ones who will be writing my letters of rec for college, which is another thing. I feel like I'm not as on the precipice as a lot of these other things I've been talking about, but I feel like I'm on the precipice for that just because, like, I've been getting so much information from different schools and so much just, like, so much information. I feel like I know a lot. Like, I don't feel like I'm an expert by any means or that I'm prepared to, like, go to college or apply for college completely yet. But I just feel like I'm on the precipice. Like, I've been thinking about it for so long. I'm ready to just, like, make that jump, like, be in that stage already, which is a feeling I think a lot of people can relate to. And it's like, you feel like you're on the cusp. Like, I'm almost going to do this. I'm so close and I'm not there yet. And, like, all of that anticipation, but, like, the good kind of anticipation. So, yes, I'm very 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 excited for all of these things i you know a little nervous because it's gonna be a lot of my plate but just super excited and i'm i'm ready i'm i feel like the past six months have been very low-key um nothing really big has been going on which can be really good because i had a lot on my plate before all of this and i'm very thankful because i wouldn't have started this podcast and so just a lot of things have played out and it's like, okay, I'm ready to be busy again. 
I the beginning of the year is always very busy for me because of sports. I don't know if I'm having sports this year. And honestly, I'm I'm not like super invested in sports. So I would be super happy to go back into my tennis season. But if that's not possible, I'm not going to be like devastated or anything. I just kind of want to focus more on like my school and things that don't require athletic ability. Just because sports, for some people, sports are like people get scholarships for sports. And I'm not one of those. I'm not athletic at all. Um, so it's just something I do for fun and more for the social aspect. And so if I can get some socialization in other ways, that would be nice. That would be a fun story. I'll tell you guys that story of why I even signed up for tennis. So in the eighth grade, there was a girl from the high school who came over who was doing her sort of exhibition, which is like basically a senior project. And hers was about getting kids to play tennis. And so she brought these like little mini tennis rackets and talked to us about the team and how it worked. And I was terrible with those little mini tennis rackets. I don't know what eighth grade me was thinking, but she was like, yeah, you get to make tons of new friends. Like, you know, your season starts early. And so you get to meet all these people before you even get into high school. And you know, it's a lot of fun. It's a non-cut sport. You'll learn all of this stuff. And I was like, you know what? Like let's play tennis this sounds like so much fun and I actually ended up making like a lot of new friends in tennis I would say one of my closest friends was gonna join the team with me anyway so I mean I think that helped a lot because in a completely new situation I probably would have been like a lot shyer but I've met a lot of really cool people through tennis and especially last year I had so much fun when we had new freshmen come in because a lot of them were so cool like they are just amazing and i'm gonna miss them but and then i met some really cool upperclassmen that i still like talk to and i i would say like we were friends like maybe we went from like friends during the tennis season to like close acquaintances which i think is fine like i think it's okay to go to go through different phases when you're like friends and maybe you're like close acquaintances and you're friends again like you know it's kind of a blurry line there, and I think everyone has their different um, definitions for all of that. But yeah, guys, it is. There's a lot of things that I feel like have ended, but I've sort of like mourned, I guess you could say, those losses, and I'm feel like I'm on the cusp. I'm feel like I'm on the precipice of just something really brand new and i'm super excited to embrace the new with open arms instead of being nervous or scared i just want to be excited and happy um which i think a lot of people can relate to especially like kids my age because you know we've kind of been during this downtime for a long time and we're ready to like be busy and i think adults can relate to that too um so yeah it's it's an exciting time, I think, and who knows, like, maybe in two weeks school will just close and I'll do online all over again, and that's okay. Like, I think being nervous about all of that and having anxiety over that isn't going to help the situation, so I might as well just take everything in stride and roll with the punches. That's going to be my motto, roll with the punches, go with the flow, and not be such an anxious little bean. That being said, I'm going to close off the episode. But before we do before we do that, let's talk about this episode's Child Cancer Organization. Today's Child Cancer Organization is Alex's Lemonade Stand. Did you know that every day 700 children worldwide are diagnosed with child cancer? Yet child cancer research only receives less than 4% of the National Cancer Institute's annual budget. It is up to all of us to fund research and find cures so that someday these children are rescued. So Alex's Lemonade Stand raises money for childhood cancer research and they do a lot of really cool things. And one of the things is lemonade stands so people can set up their own lemonade stand and sell lemonade in order to raise money for child cancer. So it was founded by a girl named Alexandra who had child cancer and she made her own lemonade stand to raise money for research and this foundation was made in her memory and it's still going on now. So I definitely encourage you to A, learn more 
and maybe make your own lemonade stand if you can and look at how that works with COVID, but definitely do your research and get involved because this is a really important cause that definitely does not get enough attention. Um, so yeah, I really encourage you to do your own research about all of these organizations and this cause. It's something that is very important to me and I just want to spread more awareness through the audience I have. Thank you so much. All right, guys, this is the end of the episode. Thank you so much for listening. Remember to follow our Instagram at Wait and See Podcast. Follow us on Spotify. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are available on pretty much every single platform, including Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Breakers, Pocket Cast, literally everything. Go check us out. And I encourage you to leave us a five star rating on Apple Podcasts and share the podcast with your friends. With that being said, thank you so much and have a great day.